Hello all. Welcome to my YouTube lecture. In this session, we are learning about writing a Verilog code for any given sequence counter using case statement. So for example, we are considering some sample sequence for writing a Verilog code and we'll have a look onto it. So here uh, we have uh, some sample sequence. We are writing a Verilog code for any sequence counter that is asked, that has been asked. Uh, just to carry out an explanation, I have taken some sample sequence wherein the counter starts counting from 0, 1, 5, 7, 9, 12, 0, 1, 5, 7, 9, 12. It goes on continuing. So when, when, when Q is 0, the next state of it should be 1. When Q is 1, the next state of it should be 5. Like that it continues. When Q's value is uh, 12, its next state should be 0. It should fall in a count, uh, counter or a ring. So it should count in a sequence. So this sequence counter design is very simple using case statement. Let us uh, see how it can be done. So first, what you have to do is, you have to write a uh, Verilog, Verilog code. Let me write it now. Module. Sequence counter clock and Q only this these things are sufficient next input is clock output is output how many bits are needed for the output that you need to decide what is the highest number here 12 is the highest number for 12 4 bits are sufficient so I declare it as 3 down to 0 Q as I'm using Q in um, always statement I should declare it as reg so Q, I'll initialize it to 0 because the first state of sequence is 0. If the first state, if 0 is not at all present, think that if 1, 5, 7, 9, 12 is a, uh, is a sequence, then you should initialize it as 1 itself. So it's not mandatory that all the time you should declare it as 0. If 0 is not appearing in your sequence, then, then you cannot have it, have the initialization as 0. Or uh, because it will not go increment from that point. Because in your sequence, whatever number is there, that should be, um, the value of uh, Q as an initial state. So here 0 is there, I am taking it as 0. Now, always at pause edge of clock, pause edge of clock, begin case. What, what, what should be the uh, case here? Case is Q itself. Case is Q itself. So case Q, so I am taking 4 bit because Q is 4 bit, 4 bit decimal when it is 0, my Q should be assigned with 4 bit D 1. So when it is 0, it should be, next state should be 1. When it is 1, what should be the next state? The next state is 5. When it is uh, 5, next state is 7. I am just following the sequence. When it is uh, when it is 7, your next state is 9. And when it is 9, your next state is 12. And similarly, when it is 12, your next state is from 12 again going back to 0. So this is uh, the completion of it. Let me cover the default case. Default Q is 4 bit tick down to 0. Whenever some some mistake because of some error in the hardware, if it uh, if Q gets some value other than the sequence numbers, then it will never enter the sequence. To avoid such case, let it be any value initially. Let us make Q to be 0 in default case so that it will enter the loop and it will remain in the loop all the time. So this is one of the trick to bring it in the loop. Now end case and always and and module so this is the simplest way of designing any sequence counter take any sequence counter and try it out um, in your own way and uh, in um, xilinx environment you can check the same and here if if you try to implement this in in any of the fpj kits then this sequence counting will not be able to observe because of high blinking speed to reduce the blinking speed what what we need to do to reduce the to reduce blinking speed you are supposed to use frequency divider frequency division that is what we do in implementation of any of the counter on fpj kit only if not in during simulation, uh, no need of any frequency divider. I have the same code here. 
I highlight two points. I stress on two points. One is initialization of Q and one more is default coverage. So these two values or numbers should be taken from the sequence that has been provided to you. If you take any other number, random number, which is not present in the sequence, then it will create a problem for you. So hence it is uh, safe to have the same number which are present in the sequence. Now we'll go to the Xilinx environment to, act, to analyze uh, the following code. So here is a same sequence counter code. I have uh, synthesized and simulated it. I have a simulation with me. So I don't restart it as we have forced some initial values to the queue. So don't restart whenever you are initializing it, it with some value. And once you force a clock, you can see the counting of uh, the sequence. 0, 1, 5, 7, 9, 12, 0, 1, 5, 7, 9, 12, and it goes on continuing. So this is how the sequence counter is implemented. One more thing to highlight about it is, if you try to implement this on any of the FPJ kit, you'll not be able to see this transition from 1, 0, 1, 5, 7, 9, 12, all these things. What you can see is all the time, all the four LEDs will blink because Q is of four bits. You need four LEDs to display the output. All the four LEDs will be blinking. I mean, not blinking. It will be on all the time. Your, your human eye uh, will fail to capture that transition between high and low between those LEDs. Hence, to reduce the blinking speed of those LEDs, you are uh, supposed to put a frequency division uh, just before you apply a, a clock so, so that you generate a new clock which has more period or less frequency, reduced frequency, and then you can use it for designing the sequence counter. Then you will be able to see the sequence counting onto, onto your FPGA. And there is one more uh, application of the sequence counter. We have an interfacing experiment in Verilog wherein we connect a stepper motor card with a FPGA in order to rotate a stepper motor. So there, to rotate a stepper motor, the logic is quite simple. You need to just write, design or write a Verilog for code for a sequence counter wherein the sequence is 369. So if you just supply the stepper motor with these four sequence 369, your stepper motor takes the clockwise rotation. If you want it to rotate in anti-clockwise direction, then just reverse the sequence. You can have one if statement and if or if if direction is one then make it clockwise uh, count it as 369 else if direction is zero no need to write direction is zero because else else part will cover it then you would count the uh, stepper motor in the rotate the stepper motor in the reverse direction so i i just uh, want you to take it as an assignment try to write a sequence counter for the sequence 369 in forward direction as well as in reverse direction on the condition on the direction bit uh, supply input Thank you. See you in the next video.